Hey guys, my name is Priscilla Elias and in case you do not know, I love cats. I love them so much, I have four of them. Shita, Nego, Fandango and Hunter. Hunter is the commercial guy, he solves around. Just because he's nicer, quieter, he kind of does what I want him to. Not exactly, but a little bit. They're all Brazilians, but they're currently living in Sweden with me and my husband. That's right, family first. When we moved to Sweden, I could not leave family behind. And since they're so cute and do so many funny and cute things all the time, I thought, why not make a video with a family photo shoot? A video of me shooting some portraits with my furry family on their most genuine and cute moments. And not only that, why not share the photo shoot itself along with the making of, some tips, the settings and the equipment I use to take these photos. That's exactly what you're gonna see in this video, but only after this intro here. <laughs> Photos of cats is not always an easy thing, huh? Different from dogs, they will usually only do what they want. So before we start and I share the making of of this photo session, along with the settings and the equipment I used to take these photos, please have in mind that if you want to take portraits with your cats, especially if you're doing self-portraits, you should get prepared in advance. What time of the day do they usually play? What time or in what situation do they do the cute things you love and that you would like to register? What do you need to have settled before you actually put your cat into the photo scene? Because remember, your cat is a rock star. You won't wait in the scene until you're ready for the photo. You'll either have it ready to go and shoot it for real, or you won't be able to catch that unique good photo, right, Hunter? That's how you need to be. But of course he won't be because he's a cat. Maybe it's time I take him out. Time out. So the first thing I did for this photo session was to think of all the shots I wanted to take with each one of my cats. I put it all down in a note and before I placed my cats into the scene, I tested and chose the best camera angles to capture what I wanted to capture, considering, of course, their time schedule. But then, Guess what? Many of the shots did not work the way I wanted them to. Why? <laughs> have you ever tried to take photos with cats? Okay. Now, have you ever tried to take photos of yourself with cats? Okay. Now, have you ever tried to take photos of yourself with cats using the camera in the tripod, lights, and trying to use a specific angle you think is best for the composition you had in mind? Okay, you probably got my point by now. Before I move on, I will tell you the equipment I used for this photo shoot. I shot all photos with the Canon 5D Mark IV and I used three different lenses throughout the session. A 50mm 1.4, which is an awesome budget lens for portraits, and 85mm lens 1.8, which is my absolute favorite for portraits because of its amazing bokeh, and a 24-70mm 2.8 for the wider shots. I will show you each photo I did with each lens in just a minute as we go through the photo session. As for the light, I use the two sets of lights I have. The continuous light, which is the one I also use for my videos. The Godox SL60W with the newer Octobox of 90cm as a diffuser. And a Canon 600DXR2 speed light mounted to a light stand with a Pro Photo medium-sized umbrella with a wide interior as a diffuser. I usually only use my continuous light, the Godox along with the Octobox for the photo sessions I do in my house, but in this case, since I want it to be more versatile and fast to be able to get some nice shots with my unstoppable family, I chose to have two sets of light ready and good to go around the house. So I would use the one that would be best positioned for each of the scenes as they happened, without having to move them too much, which could end up making me do too much noise and end up scaring them. I was so worried that they would get annoyed, but in the end, the one who got annoyed was me. Results? 
you will see in just a minute. Just know that I started this photo session at around 10 a.m. and finished at around 6 p.m. They made me work hard while they... Well, you'll see yourself. When I'm working on the computer, Shida usually spends most of the day laying over the table, right behind the computer. So I set the light, I tested the focal distance that would look good for this shot, and by then I expected Shida to be around so I could just take the shot. I'm usually editing and working on the computer while she's up and down the table, either sleeping, searching for attention, or after the reflections from the sun that comes into my office during part of the day. Exactly like this. She didn't cooperate with me to take the second shot I had in mind though. So I had to ask Hunter to help me out. Hunter is usually the guy that will be up for pretty much anything. So if a photo does not go right with the others, he's the one who saves me. Not this time though. I wanted to get a photo of my hand touching his paw, but he simply wouldn't help me out. So I decided to try taking two photos, one of my hand in the position and another photo of his paw in the position. Then later I would merge the layers in Photoshop. These kind of ideas do not always work, so I wasn't that hopeful this would. I still decided to give it a shot though. I played around with the cable so that I could get some shots of him with his paw up, and even though I was not able to get Get the exact shot I had in mind, I was pretty happy with what I ended up with. Now, the original photos without Photoshop were these ones. And then again, the final result after merging layers. While I took this shot with Hunter, Shida did something that she does every day while I'm eating breakfast, and also when she's running from the trio who insist in playing with her when she is obviously not up to. Me and my husband really try to teach her not to lay on the kitchen table, but she's a cat and, and she seems like she owns this house. She's the boss, you know? So she always likes to have breakfast with me. I know that if I brought the light too close to her or if I made too much noise with the equipment that she would be scared or annoyed and probably would leave the spot. So I decided to keep the light outside the kitchen because even though the light wouldn't be as perfect as it could be, at least I would be able to take the shot. This is something I consider important in documentary photography. Sometimes you just gotta go with whatever you got and take the shot do the best according to the available conditions. If you're after telling a story, you gotta remember that the story is what most matters. With all settled, why not have a cup of coffee? That's what we do every day anyway, isn't it? And here's the final shot I got. So, as I told you, Hunter is the only one of my cats that will let us hug him or carry him all around. He complains a bit, but that's just him. He complains, but if you put him down, he will still sit by you, waiting for you to pick him up again. So, for that reason, he's the only one who would do the traditional portrait session with me. He wouldn't scratch me, he wouldn't run away from me or get too grumpy. A little grumpy, but not too much. I planned on taking two photos with him and, hey, guess what? I know my boy. No surprises, I got to shoot them just fine. By then, it was lunchtime and there's something that happens quite often here in this house. Cats demanding my lunch. And it's funny how there are a couple of things that trigger them into going wild, waiting for their tuna water. If one of them sees me cutting coriander, squeezing mayo, and opening any can close to lunchtime, the alarm will be set off. One of them screams and warns everybody else that it's tuna day. They're not always right though. I eat that maybe twice a month, but there's always hope in their hearts. So they're always around thinking today might be the day. It's always cute to see them all around waiting for their rewards though, and today they deserved a reward. They were working hard and they will still work hard for the rest of the day. If you're 
enjoying this video and if it helps you please help me and my furry family back by simply subscribing to my channel and hitting the like button me shira nebo fandango and hunter would really appreciate it as it will help me to keep feeding them with some tasty snacks after that i just left my lights and the equipment in the living room in the safest way as possible because they're like Tasmania until the beginning of the afternoon and I went to the office to edit some shots because I knew that soon enough it would be their nap time that would be the best time to take some shots of Mabel and Fandango it happened, nap time, mommy knows them I bet by now he was thinking oh man, there comes Elmira Duff Ooh, now I have a cute little squirrely really do pet and love and charge and squeeze <laughs> well they still love me anyway, I promise. I tried quite some shots and I changed the light and angle a couple of times and here's the shot I like the most. Then I quietly placed the camera and light in a way I could shoot myself with Fandango, who is usually the hardest one of all to take photos with, since even though he's a very, very lovely cat, he's always very suspicious of absolutely everything that goes around him. Even though he's the only one of my cats that never ever put his nails out to try to scratch me, he is still the fastest and the sleepiest one of them all. He didn't seem to bother much this time though. Nap was good, blanket was warm, and the cuddle was good as well. So we were able to make a very nice portrait, right, Fandango? I wanted a close-up of us being face to face, and there would be no better place than this. Simple shots that still took me a while to take. That is one of the reasons I only plan one or two shots with each cat. We need patience until they do what they want in a way they're used to and they're comfortable with. You won't want to annoy them, otherwise no way you'll get good, genuine shots. If you have someone to shoot for you or if you're shooting someone else with a cat and your cat knows and trusts this second person also, you bet it's going to be much easier since you will be much more flexible with angles and with changing the position of the camera and the light. I had to do it myself though and it took me some more work to be able to get some nice shots. Still, more than possible. If you try this out, please tag me on Instagram so that I can see the shots you did after you watch this video. I will be super happy to check out your work. That is all for today, guys. I hope you had fun and you learned some with this photo shoot. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching me and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!